Hi, everyone. Welcome to the other topic that I want to talk about in this unit one as I welcome you all to law office management and unit one of the semester. And that is to spend a little bit of time talking about regulation of the legal profession. Many professions are regulated. And when we use that word regulated, we're referring to regulations enacted and passed by administrative agencies who write the rules and the regulations and that includes for certain professions. So for example, to be a teacher in an elementary, middle, or high school, that's a regulated profession. You can't just wake up one morning and apply to the school and decide, I want to be a teacher. You need a certain educational degree and a license from the state. Same things with doctors, nurses, dentists, and dental hygienists, as well as barbers and hairdressers who need licenses from the state to practice their craft. So that's what we're talking about here in terms of regulation of the profession. What either state laws or rules exist that govern how we in the legal profession act? Are there state laws and rules? Are there national or local associations that kind of bring our profession together and say, here's the rules for attorneys, here's the rules for paralegals, and we need a license or we need some sort of um, requirement in order to work in that profession. So that's what we mean about regulation of the profession. I'll start um, here again, generally what we mean by what we mean by regulation of profession in general. So we'll talk about lawyers and paralegals. We will mention what education is required to be a lawyer or a paralegal. Do you need an exam, like a licensing exam in order to become one? Do you need a license from a state or federal agency in order to practice your craft, your job? And then if you do, are there any continuing requirements? Like, you know, once you pass a certain exam, are you just, a, you know, a paralegal for life or an attorney for life? And how does that work? So we'll start with attorneys because in any law office, Paralegals don't act on their own. We'll talk about some of the ethical obligations to work under the direction of an attorney, but you will always be working with attorneys. And remember, the word attorney and, para attorney and lawyer are synonymous here. They mean the same thing. So attorneys have to, as we mentioned in the earlier slides, must attend law school and graduate with a Juris Doctor degree. At the end of earning that degree, the attorney to be the lawyer, you know, the person who's just graduated law school. In order to what we call practice law, to be in a to be in that, you know, doing that job, needs to take a bar exam. And the bar exams are given out by each state. So it actually means that a graduate of law school has to choose the state bar exam where she would like to practice law. So to use myself as an example, although I graduated law school in Washington, DC, my husband is from Massachusetts. We knew we would be moving here. And so we took the Massachusetts bar exam. And if you pass your state bar exam with a certain score, you are then eligible to practice law in that state. Another word for that would be that you're el eligible to practice law in that jurisdiction. All state bar exams have two parts. You are tested on some state specific laws for like, you know, if you're in Massachusetts or if you're in New York, if you're in California. But there's another part of the exam called the multi-state exam where you're tested on laws generally for all 50 state jurisdictions. And in most jurisdictions, you need a certain score on the multi-state and the state specific part in order to pass the bar exam. So in order to practice law, you have to go to law school you do have to take a bar exam and score at a certain level according to what those state standards are. And at that point, you are eligible to practice law in that jurisdiction. Generally, state bar associations also require its members to be what we call in good standing. And that means that you're adhering to the ethical requirements. So that's the other piece I want to introduce here that we will carry through the whole semester is that attorneys have ethical obligations. We call these the rules of professional responsibility. And we're going to use lots of different examples of ethics throughout the semester. But in order to practice law, you have to be a member of the bar and be in good standing, which means not violating any of the ethical obligations that attorneys have to the court, to their clients, to each other. And so that's something that we'll talk about. 
What about the American Bar Association? You may have heard of that because our paralegal program in Middlesex is approved by the American Bar Association. But the American Bar Association is not run by the federal or state government. It is a private organization that's primary purpose is to raise up the practice of law generally, to just keep our standards across the entire United States very high. And so the ABA is held in very high respect by all of us in the legal profession. The ABA also has put out model rules of professional responsibility, and you can see they're called model. They don't have um, the legal effect that each state's rules of professional responsibility do have for attorneys. So for attorneys in Massachusetts, we adhere to the Massachusetts rules of professional responsibility. And I will be having you look at some of those rules even as part of your homework this week, and we will continue to look at them all semester. In many jurisdictions, even after an attorney becomes licensed to practice law, she must complete what's called continuing legal education, which means every certain every year the attorney must sit through a certain number of hours of classes pertaining to the legal profession and different subject areas to really just stay up to date. Just like any other area of work period, we don't just sit back and say, oh, I graduated, now I know everything. I mean, we know life around us changes. So many states have what's called CLE, or continuing legal education requirements. Just as a funny aside, Massachusetts for attorneys doesn't have any CLE requirements, although most attorneys do take continuing legal education courses because we do have an ethical obligation to stay up to date on our areas of law. So even though it's not a requirement by our rules of professional responsibility, it's still really significant. Okay, so what about paralegals? What's really interesting is that the field of paralegals is not uniformly regulated. You may have already figured this out, but to become a paralegal, you don't have to go to paralegal school, although most employers require coursework, and you don't need to take an exam. It's not a licensed profession. So to be a paralegal when you finish our program here at Middlesex or any other educational program, you don't sit for a state exam to become a paralegal. What's interesting is there is a bit of movement in the legal profession to license paralegals. There's been movement in California, in Washington state, but not here in Massachusetts, and it's certainly not uniform around the country. Just something interesting as we just move into the future that you may see regulation of this profession. Obviously, there are ABA approved programs, and you can see that on job ads as well. You can see employers looking for that because that lets an employer know that you have a significant foundation in the law. You have experience in drafting documents, conducting legal research, and really preparing you for the profession. There are some private organizations like NALA and NIFPA. They stand for the National Association of Legal Assistants, the National Federation of Paralegals. And these are not, they're not state entities, they're not run by any one state, and they're completely voluntary organizations. But they do provide some professional assistance. And through their additional coursework and membership, you could become what they call a certified paralegal. Now, regionally in Massachusetts, most employers here are not looking for that requirement, although many paralegals here ultimately obtain that status with these organizations. I'll leave it to you through your professional career to see if this is something you feel you need to or want to pursue, but it is not a requirement to get an entry level job. It's not a requirement to advance in your profession, but if you're looking for something extra, if you're looking for additional education beyond your degree here at Middlesex, you could pursue a certification with NALA or NIFPA. Again, not required. However, I do wanna mention the rules of professional conduct that I mentioned on the last slide. We will start looking at the Massachusetts rules of professional responsibility for attorneys even this week. The ABA also has model rules of professional responsibility for paralegals. So we will start to look at those all semester because understanding what we do for work the environment that we work in, the clients we work with, 
the courts. We have a lot of professional ethical obligations and attorneys, once they are members of the bar of their state, must comply with those ethical obligations. And if they don't, they can suffer repercussions like being reprimanded and at worst, losing their license to practice the profession. And so as a paralegal working together in tandem and under the direction of an attorney, it's important that you are aware of these professional obligations as well. Even though ultimately the responsibility will lie with your attorney, it really is important for all of us to understand the guidelines where we work. So for homework this week, you'll have a chance to at least peruse those rules and answer a little bit of questions about them. But as I mentioned, in later units this semester, we'll be diving in a little deeper into some of those rules of professional responsibility. All right, thank you for listening to this PowerPoint and I look forward to reading everyone's discussion board posts. And again, welcome to the class and I hope we have a great semester.